Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This is Eisenerz and today I want to talk about a certain deck archetype that I'm seeing more and more of but a lot of people are unaware of. An archetype that's somewhat controversial and sometimes gets a lot of hate but can be extremely efficient nonetheless. So let's have a look at parasitic decks. In biology, a parasite is defined as an organism that lives in or on an organism of another species and benefits by deriving nutrients at the other's expense. In that sense, a parasitic deck is a deck that benefits of the three other decks in the pot by expecting them to use up their resources without supplying anything back to the pot in return. What does that mean? How does any deck have to supply anything to the pot when the goal of the game is to win? We aren't playing casual group hug, right? Well, what you provide to the pot is the ability to present an early win, interact, stacks or outgrind your opponents. By doing that you either draw in interaction or you present interaction. A parasitic deck does neither in a meaningful way. It mostly does not threaten early wins like a turbo deck would. It does not provide control, interaction or stacks like blue or white based decks would in order to stop faster opponents from going off or in order to keep mid-range decks at bay. And it also mostly does not generate a ton of impactful value quickly or consistently like a typical mid-range deck would. So from a CDH point of view, these decks do not do what you'd expect from a CDH deck. But somehow they are still fairly successful, especially against less experienced players and in random pots or unknown metas. Why is that? Well, like I said before, these decks thrive off of playing into a somewhat homogenized meta, in which there are only a few commonly used win cons, a few commonly played decks or archetypes, and everyone knows those threats and has a way to interact with those threats. In that sense, they take the role of a rogue deck, but unlike a typical rogue deck or a meta buster deck, they do not threaten a win early or have perfectly chosen stack pieces to control the game. In a 4 player pot, the parasitic deck can only really exist because it can expect the other 3 players to deal with each other's win attempts and value engines. It can expect to be underestimated and it can expect that the other decks will at some point run out of resources to deal with it. So which specific decks could be considered parasitic? Well, like I said, parasitic decks don't have a meaningful way of controlling or stacking the board, so neither blue or white color identities. And they also don't have explosive mana acceleration, so no red color identity. This leaves us with mostly mono green and to an extent Golgari decks. Now, before I continue, try not to get all salty on me if I mention your favorite deck now. I made sure to check with some very knowledgeable CDH brewers, pilots and tournament grinders before I dared making this video, and there can always be exceptions to this depending on your specific list. So here we go. One of the most well-known parasitic decks is the Gitrock Monster. It's a combo deck that used to be played incredibly widely. It can go off from nowhere and is hard to interact with once a combo is in place. But it's almost impossible for this deck to present an early win because its engines are too expensive and it folds to common hate pieces like Douthy Voidwalker. This deck can also not interact with fast combo decks and it can also not outgrind its opponents in a stacked out situation. Without other players in the pot to stop the opponents from going off, the Gitrock monster will almost always lose to the turbo deck, the stack deck or the mid-range deck. Another example for this kind of deck would be Yeva. I know Yeva has a very passionate following and I can already feel the hate incoming, but bear with me here. Yeva can present a win out of nowhere and an instant speed, but the deck does not have the ability to interact in a meaningful way. It plays minimal hate with Oof and Thorn of the Amethyst, as well as some permanent removal. But if not provided with the aid of other players in the pot, the deck will almost always lose to the turbo players. And still, Yeva managed to win tournaments, so parasitic or not, its success is undeniable. Does that mean all green or Golgari decks are parasitic? Well, a lot of them are, but certainly not all of them. Yisan, for example, is a tutor in the command zone and can very easily tutor interactive permanents into play and it can do so fairly reliably. And Golgari decks can be built as Turbo Hawk decks, like Verals. So not all green or Golgari decks are parasitic, but most parasitic decks are green or Golgari, if that makes sense to you. So let's wrap this up now. A parasitic deck cannot consistently present an early win. It cannot outgrind typical mid-range decks. It cannot interact or stacks in a meaningful way. It relies heavily on a homogenized meta. 
it relies on the other players dealing with each other and it is able to sneak wins out of nowhere. These decks are mostly found in green or Golgari colors. If you are faced with a parasitic deck, make sure to communicate its role to the pot so everyone is aware of it and does not underestimate it. Don't be afraid to direct hate into its direction, because otherwise it will sneak up a win. These decks will also try to politic you into not fearing their board state or their card advantage. They will try to come off as non-threatening and they will try to direct interaction and hate towards the other players. So always be aware of that. Additionally, and probably most importantly, do not try to force through a badly protected win attempt in the mid-game, because that will open up the window of opportunity for a parasitic deck to win right after you. Keep up interaction, keep up removal, and only combo off once you are sure that you can pull through. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please remember to like, share, subscribe and comment. With your support we can definitely crack the 2k subscriber mark this year. Special thanks to my patrons and our Discord community. If you too want to play games with us, hop over to my Discord server. And if you want to support my channel even more, you can find a link to my Patreon page down below. This is Eisenerz, thank you for watching my videos and Auf Wiedersehen.